So it struck me that the, uh, the title of the panel, the anti-anti-vax, is a little bit tortuous, and really what that means is pro-vaccination. So I wanted to uh, refocus the, uh, the discussion, at least for a very short bit, on why we care about this, situ this uh, entire situation. So, you know, medical uh, progress has been phenomenal over the past century. We can, we can save the life of children born at 300 grams. We've turned childhood leukemia from a disease that was almost uniformly fatal into one that has a survival rate of greater than 80%. We transplant entire human organs, and in critical care, we've got machines that can keep you alive for weeks, even after your lungs have stopped and your heart has stopped beating. But they all pale in comparison to the impact of vaccination. In fact, if you want to do the greatest amount of good with the least risk and cost, you would be really hard pressed to find anything better than vaccination. To really understand the impact, you don't have to go any further than the uh, very first vaccine, and that was the one against smallpox, of course. It was a uh, plague on humanity. It's been with us more than 10,000 years, and uh, you know, world being, as it was pointed out earlier, only 6,000 years old. I know that's just a fascinating fact. Um, <laughs> But it killed about 30% of the uh, people it infected, and over the course of human history, it's claimed the lives of an estimated 300 million people. Um, since the vaccine was first developed by Jenner back in 1796, it was sporadically used, uh, but by 1949, the United States had seen its last case of natural smallpox. Uh, but the effort to eradicate smallpox was really undertaken in earnest in 1967. And that was with the Intensified Global Eradication Project. At that point, we still saw 10 to 15 million people per year getting infected by smallpox. Uh, and that was uh, spread over 31 different countries. So for 10 years, we had response teams racing across continents uh, to areas of uh, smallpox outbreaks, vaccinating everybody around the, uh, the, inf the afflicted people, trying to prevent the spread. And after 10 years, it paid off. This is uh, Ali Malin. He's a hospital cook, uh, was a hospital cook in um, America, Somalia, and he was the last human being on Earth to naturally contract smallpox. We monitored for two more years, and in uh, December 9th, 1979, the World Health, World Health Assembly officially declared smallpox eradicated, a disease for, that had wiped out 300 million people over our history at a cost of $23 million per year. Only $23 million per year, worldwide effort, was able to eradicate it forever. In these last two centuries, we've made some phenomenal progress. And these, uh, we have over two dozen different diseases that are vaccine preventable at this point. 15 of them are part of our childhood immunization schedule. Uh, and every single one of these has been phenomenally successful. They've changed the face of the way that we practice pediatrics. This is a, uh, a chart showing just 10 of these vaccine preventable diseases. In the uh, left-hand column, what you see is the average incidence of disease from each one of them before the institution of vaccination. And the next column you see is 2007, the incidence we currently, uh, well, almost currently, experience in the United States. Um, just put that into perspective, that's a potential over 1,100,000 cases of uh, vaccine preventable disease from these 10 alone. And remember, this is an incomplete list versus only about 11,000 that we had to deal with. That's about a million children a year from these alone that don't have to take antibiotics if they were appropriate, wouldn't need to be hospitalized, wouldn't need to be at risk being disfigured or die, all because we vaccinate. And there's more hope on the way. There are two more diseases that are scheduled for eradication, polio and measles. Uh, polio was the first one added to, to the chopping block back in 1988. Uh, at that point, it was paralyzing about 1,000 children a, uh, a day around the world. And now, as of 2008, uh, after 2 billion childhood immunizations being uh, distributed around the world, we saw only 1,652 cases. In the 20 years that this program has been active, it has prevented an estimated 5 million cases of paralysis and 250,000 deaths. Measles is the next one. Measles remains the second leading cause of infectious disease death worldwide. Um, at the turn of this past century, just nine years ago, it was still uh, killing about a million children a year, give or take. Um, since the, uh, the beginning of the measles initiative in 2001, that rate has been steadily dropping, and we have a stated goal of a 90% reduction by, two, uh, by 2010. Next year, we're unlikely to make that goal, unfortunately, and eradication by 2015, we still may have time. Um, we have the money to do this. We have the technology to do this. And all we need is the public will to eradicate these diseases from, our, uh, from the world again. And yet here we are. 
standing here discussing the, uh, the continuing fallout from a very large, very coordinated and motivated group of individuals um, who oppose vaccination. Most of them unified by the erroneous belief that some, something about the vaccines, some form of, uh, of toxin or interaction from the vaccines is causing autism, all with zero evidence to support that base claim. The misinformation they're spreading is reducing our vaccination rates, it's costing us herd immunity, um, and it's causing the resurgence of vaccine-preventable disease. And this is why we care, as physicians and as skeptics. Children are dying as a direct result of a lack of critical thinking. And we can make a difference. You can make a difference. We need help within medicine. Everyone in here is the, the parents and children, the uh, brothers and sisters, the co-workers and friends of people who are not vaccinating. And information from you, coming straight from you, can do more to change their mind than studies and data and professional opinions sometimes ever will. So um, I'm going to end with this. This is the Jenny McCarthy body count, as was previously mentioned, um, run by Derek over here, who you'll hear from in just a minute. Um, so I just end by pleading you to keep in mind of the many, many things that are being sacrificed that we'll talk about. Um, these children don't need to be hurt anymore. Thank you.